Yes, wonderful. Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome to the February 2023 Jupiter Community Call. Um, that went that month went really fast for me, so I keep having to remind myself we are at the end of February. But before we get started, I have to do my usual announcements. So one, yes, this call is recorded. I told you a moment ago, but still, uh, the notes will also be recorded. It's posted publicly in a YouTube playlist after. Um, we Right, as all Jupiter community engagements, we are held to the code of conduct. Jupiter code of conduct can be found at any time at jupiter.org slash conduct. That applies to everyone here, which includes me, in case that's ever needed. And third, let me know if I pronounce your name wrong. I'm trying to work on my um, omnipotent naming, you know, name pronunciation powers, but they're not there yet. So I want to show as much respect as I can in the meantime. But yeah, I think that's my main spiel. Uh, for people who may have been here before, may not, what we're going to do is follow this agenda. I'm going to link it one more time. Sorry, you'll probably see me link that again. Always reminds me. Um, so basically, people have signed up on here ahead of time. We're going to kind of go down the list, starting with the short reports, the things without that don't need further discussion to longer discussions. Sometimes those include demos. Sometimes those are questions for the community. But that's what's going to happen. So let me know if you have any questions in the meantime, though. But that's my pause. Without further ado, <laughs> uh, I can get started with the short reports. So I have all the things on this. I will be quiet for a few moments in case anyone is inspired to give us a little woohoo. This thing, you know, got released this week. Uh, this thing changed. So, yes, silence for me. Okay, neat. Well, I have uh, two little things for you. First, I do want to thank the security project once again for helping us coordinate with the calendar. We've had kind of a back and forth in the last year trying to coordinate. This is kind of a popular time slot for Jupiter meetings because it overlaps with a lot of time zones for people. So super appreciate them being flexible so that we could keep things both on the calendar and get our alternating weeks right. So thank you so much. Special thanks to Roland too for coordinating that communication. Um, and yes, no collisions anymore. Thank you for putting that on the notes. <laughs> I also wanted to give a quick governance update. I am, you know, maybe not the most knowledgeable about everything, but I wanted to let people know the as we're ramping up things, I feel like it's been hard to communicate sometimes. This uh, software steering council has met. We're trying to get regular meetings both for ourselves and for open office hours on the Jupiter community calendar, just so you know. That is a work in progress. Thanks for your patience. I am doing that too. So thanks for your patience with me specifically <laughs> as I'm running around uh, scheduling different meetings. So I hope next time, well, next time we meet, I should be able to point to that on the calendar. But yes, any other quick governance questions? What are you talking about, Isabella? Okay, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> and finally, any that inspire any last minute? short report, update, celebration. Cool, nice, nice. Uh, then we will be going to agenda items, if that is okay. Right now we have one on the agenda, but there's certainly a lot of discussion that can happen there. Of course, if people think of other things they'd like to discuss, feel free to add it lower. I'll keep checking the agenda. But without further ado, Rowan, take it away. Oh, wait, thank you. Um, I will maybe, okay, so I, well, I'm, I'm Rowan, I am on the executable books team, I'm also the founder of Curve Note. I'm involved in a lot of scientific communication uh, work, I suppose. Uh, the executable books team is the team behind Jupiter book, and last week um, we spun out MIST, which is the markup language behind, uh, that was sort of incubated in the Jupyter Book project into its own sort of standalone project. Um, and so we're starting to wrap more governance around that, more structure with MIST enhancement proposals, as well as um, new tools that are being built in the JavaScript world. So uh, all of Jupyter Book is built on the Sphinx documentation stack, which is used a lot in the Python community. 
one of the things that we're gaining by moving over into the JavaScript world is better integration with tools like Jupyter Lab. And so that, that was the, the thing that I'd like to show today. Um, so maybe I can screen share and just show a bit of a demo of the types of things that I am talking about. <laughs> awesome. Um, so uh, may maybe just like a quick uh, demo of MIST. So MIST, uh, mist-tools.org is our new website for the project. And uh, we're getting up and running with uh, documentation, but the, the big things that you can do with MIST is that, that you can't really do in Jupyter book is really support scientific uh, documents and publications. And so you can create interactive, uh, like scientific documents with cross-references, um, really nice figures and things like that, as well as export out to a lot of different uh, PDF formats. Um, and so from this, you can get to uh, sort of high quality PDF documents um, quite easily. And these can include uh, Jupyter outputs as well, rendered static versions of Jupyter outputs. So that's um, a little bit of sort of what, what we're working on in the MIST tools project. A lot of this has thinking in the scientific communication space. So as researchers are creating scientific reports, what sort of metadata and front matter do you need to add to that? And so that's that's where a lot of this thinking is coming from. And so I want to just quickly show you what that sort of looks like inside of Jupyter Lab now. So this is uh, Jupyter Lab with the MIST extension installed. And one of the, the big things that can come in with that is adding metadata, like rich metadata as data to um, the top of notebooks. And so this is coming in as a front matter YAML block right now. And then you can execute that as you would any other Jupyter cell. And then it gives you a nice looking thing with uh, like, like your license information, your GitHub links, things like your email and ORCID ID if you're uh, into that, affiliations, some ability to add extra information at the top of your uh, title block as well. And so this is typically what a lot of authors who are writing tutorials do with custom HTML. And the challenge with that is it isn't um, accessible to, to parsing or other downstream tools. So we're starting to try and turn that into data and get folks using it like um, as, as you would. And that requires you to have an easy ability to edit it and also like a nice way to view it. And some of the other pieces that MIST allows you to do is call out blocks. And so the, the syntax for that is by adding um, sort of uh, these bracketed directives. If folks are um, that know some MIST markdown, this is an admonition uh, in, in Sphinx terminology. And so that allows you to create these uh, call outs as well as you can start to add um, class information to this like drop down and so this this is really bringing that um, the sort of rendering capabilities that authors are looking for in Jupyter book for example into the notebook experience we can also have things like cross references sorry these are just random <laughs> pictures from unsplash about beaches um, and uh, footnotes and then this also allows you to have cross references to those figures as well. And so here I have labeled a math block and then I've started to uh, cross reference that over here. And that allows me to click on this reference and then see um, the cross reference uh, text there as well. Awesome. I think those, those are the main features of this uh, new piece. Oh, I guess there's like tabs and grids and cards and stuff like that. Um, any any questions on sort of the markdown side? I have some more general questions if no one else does. 
Yeah, and then I do. I have one one more thing to show. As oh, then well. go but, ahead. Yeah. Um, no, uh, go go for uh, go for your question. <laughs> Oh, no, I feel like mine are more general. I wanted to check. I know you said that it's used in uh, executable book. Is there anywhere else you know of that MIST is being used right now? So about 10% of Python Sphinx documentation is now using MIST. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's getting pretty widespread on that side. Um, yeah, I think that's that's probably the main adoption community at the moment. Nope, that's about what I thought too, but it was good to hear. Thanks. Awesome. The other piece that we're working on is bringing inline execution into these markdown cells. And so that allows us, the, the syntax here is subject to change, but um, one of the extensible parts of missed markdown is having uh, these roles and directives and roles are an inline extension point. And so this is the, the role syntax. We might change this again in the future, but this allows you to access the Python kernel and execute um, different pieces and then in like embed these in line. And that is pretty cool when you're starting to do things like showing arrays and having narrative around um, around your uh, your text. So you can do things like evaluate the sum in line, have the max, and just like have these user expressions be uh, directly embedded in the text that you're writing. And that also uh, happens with widgets. And so you can start to uh, embed these Jupyter widgets directly in the MIST markup. And that is great for sort of showing different interactivity in different sort of ways. Um, and then that can also work for things like figures and spark lines that you can start to bring directly in line and add some interactivity or uh, text and sort of start to weave computation, not just mark down code, mark down code, but have computation sprinkled throughout your, your documents. And so this this is uh, like this was released last week. Um, that is something that we're working on quite hard at the moment, and are super excited about the the different ways that you can sort of bring interactivity, text, presentation, as well as uh, export out to many different types of formats as well. Awesome. Okay, that's that's all. <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm being quiet for a moment. Anyone else have questions before I start asking them? Okay. Um yeah, no, I've been seeing Mist around for uh, a little while as I've been here, but I haven't actually seen, I think, a full demo on it before. So thank you for doing that. I'm super glad we'll have this recorded as well because it'd be a great reference for me to show people when they have questions. Um if it's not too much. For me to ask or too much like oh I, I can't tell that um when because I know you mentioned you're at the notebook format workshop that is happening right now uh would you mind talking like do, I'm assuming mist has some overlap with your interests of why you're there is there any kind of thing that you're thinking about it connected with the notebook more than as an extension as you showed here um I think that the types of pieces that we're bringing to that discussion are sort of the challenges that we've come across in building mm -hmm. this extension and things like um, these inline executions are sort of mixing the concept between what is a code cell that can be executed and then what is a markdown that isn't is, mm -hmm. is, is sort of generally thought of just rendered mm -hmm. and now we're starting to mix execution into there and there aren't good places to store for example, this widget metadata or the outputs um, associated. And so the, those are the types of things that are being talked about. Um, and uh, other examples of that are things like SQL cells, so different types of inputs that have different outputs being stored. And so I think there's a general feeling, at least in the workshop, that there's an expansion of the input types and better structures around storing and dealing with those that mm -hmm. can accommodate use cases like uh, MIST or like adding SQL cells. And there's a number of other examples there as well. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that's really good to know. That makes total sense though, right? Like, yeah, that there's more of a mix of things going on here. Yeah, yeah, we're blurring the lines considerably. <laughs> <laughs> right. But, and to some degree, that seems like a natural extension, right? Like arguably the notebook itself was initially like, right. Having those different cell types is blurring lines of what were previously different documents. So yeah. yeah. Sorry, I cut you off. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm super excited about this for, uh, well, especially in like educational tutorial publishing in mm -hmm. bringing this in scientific publishing as well. That's my day job is working with publishers and societies who are trying to grapple with like how to bring computation computational thinking into their publishing workflows mm -hmm. and especially thinking about the notebook format and how you can serialize and archive that appropriately over time mm -hmm. um, and those are are tough questions especially if you're also trying to push the boundary <laughs> of what of what you can do at the same time yeah I have a question. Um, how much of how much of the I don't know too much about about the back end, or actually I don't know too much about MIST itself. But my the question I've got here is um, if I were to take say the notebook that you've got here and um, process it into um, a static HTML document, how much of the content that I see here would would come through that? Is the is that a you know is it, pushing the interactivity through, say, for instance, all the way to that kind of static document. Is that kind of a goal or? Yes, very much. So there's there's another project that I'm involved in in the executable book space called Phoebe, which is bringing interactivity in sort of a headless Jupyter way into uh, tools like Jupyter Book or other HTML pages that are like narrative or application first and not notebook first and so this this is one example of sort of bringing those that execution so this is using a, a binder instance behind the scene and when we're starting to change widgets that's recomputing the notebook and so this this is the type of experience that we're aiming at is that you can execute or you can write your documents inside with this interactivity and there's publishing mechanisms both in sort of static like PDF formats that have degraded but still good experiences on in terms of like serializing and taking screenshots and capturing a static output. And then our, our goal is to help promote these type of experiences where that interactivity and computation is really baked all the way through to the uh, end sharing of those documents. Yeah. So that's 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 the goal. <laughs> so that some of this exists. Some hey. of this is more more demo-y um, at the moment, but we're starting to really push on on a lot of these ideas and different efforts are coming together. And so hopefully in the coming months we'll have a lot more progress on this. Thanks. Yeah, that's really cool. I haven't actually heard almost anything about that project. Phoebe, you said. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There is there is going to be a JupyterCon talk about that in May. Um, sneak peek. Thank sneak, you. Sneak peek. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, that's super. Sorry. I know I could dig into this longer. I'm going to double check the agenda real quick, but I don't think anything has been added yet wow thank you i think this was roland taking all these notes this is awesome these are probably the most in-depth in -depth community call notes we've had in a while thank you um this is a, a very typical me question to ask and i know sometimes it catches people off guard but something that i've wondered you know since particularly right markdown and rst which mist kind of is bringing them together both have uh, to my knowledge, fairly typical HTML outputs, which makes them a little more accessible. I don't know what happens when you start mixing things with Mist. I don't know how it uh, reconciles those outputs and some of those cool interactivity things. I would bet just in general, we haven't thought too much about accessibility with, but and accessibility is in like usability for um, disabled people, not approachability. Just I know sometimes people use them interchangeably. Do you have any thoughts on that or not? I I would say that we are trying. 
<laughs> yeah. Um, so we, we're, we're definitely keeping a lot of these things in mind. And so we're doing as best a job we can, especially on the sort of static HTML mm -hmm. outputs and mm -hmm. sort of the automated tools that we have available to us. I think a lot of that gets more difficult when you start to get into the widgets. Oh, absolutely, world. yeah. <laughs> um, and so that's, I, I think that's, there's, I think efforts going on in the Jupyter ecosystem, we're using the same uh, technology pieces as Jupyter. And so as Jupyter improves accessibility around the widget space, those improvements will flow through here as well. Um, and so it's it's certainly on like a lot of the things that we have top of mind are things like archivability, structured data formats, mm -hmm. having um, semantic HTML outputs and had, like paying attention to the accessibility scores as much as we can. Yeah, no, that makes total sense. Um, yeah, no, that, that's good to hear though, what people are thinking and good to hear that it might be caught upstream. It's making me, yeah, the, the, this discussion is making me think about a previous job though I was not focused on scientific publications uh, exclusively, but yeah, it's really interesting to see all this come up again. So awesome. Cool. I am being quiet again for a moment. People are excited. I thought this is a really cool demo, but admittedly I'm pretty excitable. That's a part of why I run these things. I'm, you know, here to hype you up. That's it's super fun. We we sort of launched the project officially a week and a half ago, and it's been a ton of fun having uh, folks come in and find out about it and just get sort of excited about the, I think, the vision of well, trying to bring scientific publishing a step closer into the, the future of computation and interactivity and reproducibility and sort of mixing a lot of these things together. And I, I certainly think the the community focus of Jupiter is a good place to incubate some of these concepts and ideas as we uh, tackle some open science and open access goals as well. Yeah. No, it's awesome to see. Like, I remember a lot of the things that you're you're trying to tackle being like either pain points or like kind of desired use cases. So it's pretty awesome to see them. I'm glad you're getting the, that feedback from other people though, too. Yeah. Cool. Well, we are roughly halfway through this call. And I don't have other things on the agenda, but I will be quiet for a moment in case anyone's like, oh, I forgot to say this thing got released, but I can also start larger discussions or let you all be free. I probably won't let you all be free. We only do this once a month, so. Well, I, perhaps this is, I don't know. I don't know if someone will think this is the best idea, but I have been thinking about the notebook format workshop going on, right? Clearly I'm not there for various reasons, but um, I don't know if that piqued anyone else's interest. The notebook really is at the foundation of, I wouldn't say all, but definitely most, I think of Jupiter work, particularly, you know, people have a lot of different interface preferences for it, but the notebook itself, right? Uh, proliferates to all of those. Um, I haven't been following it too closely, but do have people had any thoughts about that? I'm assuming at least some of you besides that Rowan are also not there or any notebook format thoughts that have kind of been on your mind. Mm -hmm. No, just me then. Okay. I can talk a little more, but maybe I will let you free today. I don't want to torture you all here. Yeah, I have been really curious, right? One of the big things that I'm I'm hoping is a discussion here, I believe it came up was um, that we don't have a type of markdown, right? That we specify within the notebook despite having these markdown cells. Um, in some ways, this is really good. As someone who works a lot on accessibility that has created some um, different problems for us when we do user testing in different ways because sometimes we don't know what we're gonna get. People get different uh, kind of experiences and output. So that's something that I'm really interested in seeing what comes from it. Also a little afraid sometimes, to be honest, because I'm not sure, you know, how that decision will ripple, but that that's something I'm curious to see what comes from this that helps inspire people further. 
Yeah, I think. Oh, sorry. No, you, you go. Well, I was just going to prompt you a little bit, Isabella. Do you do you have an idea of what you would like to see? No, that's part of the problem. I haven't had a chance to dive specifically into that. Sometimes that's what happens because I have all the different projects and I try and like take the learnings from a lot of the different projects I work on and bring them to people, but I don't necessarily get to work on all the solutions of problems I see come up because it's not the like dedicated point of it. So uh, I, my very tentative answer without a heavy technical background would be just having like knowing what markdown specification we're following at all would be would be really helpful just because right then we have a, a specification for that because that I think in all spaces but definitely with accessibility thoughts is really really uh, helpful like having those kind of rules because we know then we can map them onto whatever relevant things or you know like find other what do I want to say something that I spend a lot of time doing right because Jupiter stuff is perhaps a little bit still an unusual way to use internet technologies um, compared to others is right there are web accessibility guidelines um, I would not say that all the things it's not always clear how they correlate to some of our use cases because sometimes right kind of like we were talking about with Miss, we're using things maybe in ways that people don't expect or we're kind of pushing them to some limit that really these aren't designed for. Um, there's a lot of different ways, but so trying to map those one-to-one -one and having like knowing which markdown specification, at least then we know what the specification is. We're kind of trying to map places. Whereas something I've had right now, and part of the reason we have done testing on kind of different notebook, like ways to interact. I don't want to say exclusively interfaces because some of them are like and be converted to HTML, which is not right, quite an interface anymore, but still like the output we get from that is one type of thing, but sometimes the way that gets rendered elsewhere is different. And it'd be nice if we could tell people like, no, we're able to fix that and we know it's going to fix everywhere. Or we know what kind of HTML it's always going to give us no matter where you run it, if that kind of makes sense. Because a lot of the way that a lot of the accommodations um, kind of get hooked in at the HTML level. So that's my limited. Yeah, sorry, I wish I had an easier answer for you. Dangerous to ask me questions. I think at, at the so at the notebook format, they have they're sort of split into three groups at this stage. <laughs> yeah. um, and so when uh, they're talking about a text based format, uh, I think that's in addition to sort of the standard um, format, but sort of like either pointing like the uh, GP text way of working and sort of improving some of the rough edges around that from an integration perspective. There's a cell types workflow, which I think is actually getting exactly to what you're talking about, about specifying the input type mm -hmm. with a bit more specificity than what we currently have. And then I think they're also talking about uh, markdown formats inside of um, the cell, I think, where, where MIST is um well in, very interested in those type of conversations as well so yeah no that's good to know thank you I didn't want to put you on the spot with updates for that but I know like for me I've been kind of watching that from afar knowing I can go and being like oh I'm gonna see what happens with that um <laughs> yeah. yeah no that's good to hear Yeah, I'm assuming have the maybe I shouldn't ask. I'm also curious to see what comes of some of the metadata conversations because I know we have that open right now. I don't know if anybody else has concerns for that too. I know people use cell <laughs> metadata for a lot, a lot of different things. Um, and from my understanding, it's kind of an open box right now where people put whatever they want, which you know, pros and cons to that for sure. Talking about the archivability earlier, that makes the old archivist and me go, no. But <laughs> yeah, it, it has definitely come up in conversation. <laughs> yeah, I but I'm not sure if there, there's oh yeah solving these things, but uh, it's it's being discussed. Yeah, no. Does anyone else happen to use cell metadata for anything that they would want to know? I know there's. I mean, I feel like I've seen a bajillion of that in the years of running this call, where people are like, "How are you doing that?" And they're like, "Oh, well, we can put this here." Yeah, Isabella, I'll share. Um, so I work over at Notable, which is a managed notebook platform, and we use cell metadata very heavily. Um, we, I mean, we have our own front end interface, right? So we're not 
uh, kind of rendering on the open source, like Jupyter or Jupyter Lab interfaces. But for instance, all of our uh, like visualization, our DEX visualization tool, um, the state of that tool is stored in cell metadata. So that if you, for instance, uh, disconnect from a kernel and you're in a non-live notebook and you're interacting with that visualization tool, you're adding charts, you're filtering, um, then when you start the kernel up, um, you know, that that state is still in the cell metadata. And so like kind of on the back end, if we're creating variables based on uh, what filters you've applied in the chart, then like all that metadata is still there. Um, so like that's that's one example of how we use cell metadata pretty heavily. Uh, and we kind of namespace all of that um, sort of in notable key in the cell metadata to avoid running into other stuff like that. Oh, that's really interesting. I don't know if I've heard that before, actually, but that's really cool to see. Thank you for sharing. Is, Isabella or Rowan, are there um, GitHub issues or discourse threads um, about changes to metadata? I, I, I've kind of been keeping up on the, the notebook format workshop, um, but I wasn't aware that the cell metadata uh, structure or anything like that was being talked about or being considered. I There is a discourse community um, that is going on right now, and I could try and find the link to that. Um, yeah, I don't, I think most of what they're doing right now is sort of like in, in person or in workshop documents at the moment, but I'm sure all of that will become like more widely available for comments and, and, and that as they wrap up the workshop. I, I don't, I, I don't actually know what the workshop's going on. I just sat in on an hour or two this morning. Um, I can look, I don't know if I've there, I feel like there probably is an issue somewhere just to be totally honest with you, but I don't know off the top of my head where it is. I just, or if it's, I could be wrong and it's just come up in discussion because it it, it does technically like have a specification right now. It's just totally open and like, should there be? Uh, so I'm not, I'm not singularly aware. I just had suspected from their conversations that it might come up, but I can look around for you. There might be, Discourse might be the right, um, yeah, but I can look. Sorry, I don't have an easy answer for you with that. No problem, thanks. I think I'll share that um, our use of um, cell metadata is basically for, um, for marking cells for specific treatment when we're rendering either as a notebook or uh, as static HTML, or to provide a way, an easy way to introspect what's going on in the cell and pick out a piece of it and send it somewhere. So we, we do a lot of notebook prototyping and then creating a report from it and then croning those. And um, sometimes people, though, don't want to go look at the report. They'll want just can you post the can you post the plot from that notebook into Slack? And so having an easy way to just pick out the right cell and get the thing you need and then send it over to Slack. And so but basically that the metadata, the tag is basically just set when you author the notebook. There's no no more sophisticated manipulation of the metadata. Uh, programmatically or anything like that. So kind of a really kind of very simple kind of exploitation of the capability. You say simple, but I think that's like a a, a popular one, right? Like it's still really useful. <laughs> yeah. No, that makes sense. And thank you all for sharing i don't have to drag you along here any longer i'm seeing some things come up on the jupiter discourse like plenty of things referencing notebook metadata i'm not seeing anything right away that talks about like you know for example a proposal for an updated metadata or like oh you know notebook uh, format workshop kind of stuff so i'm not seeing anything come up right away just more um 
general discussions, I think in cases I'm seeing mostly like people, I used it this way or it broke for me this way, which is about what I <laughs> expect. Um, so I'm not seeing anything come up immediately. Sorry about that. Yeah, no worries. We'll, we'll keep an eye out. Yeah. Um, cool. Well, you've, you've all uh, entertained me in a longer discussion than probably any of you were planning for today. Uh, apologies for anyone who was like, oh, I'm just going to be uh, quiet today. I super appreciate it, though. Um, getting good info out here. And I like to hear what everyone's thinking. This is one of my main touch points for that. So I will check the agenda one more time, but I think we just have awesome notes. Cool. Yeah. With that, maybe I will let you be free early today. Um, reminder that the next community call will be end of March. Um, I, at the moment, I believe it's at the same time because of the security group so, or project. So thank you so much for that. And yeah, I will be updating posts with that. This will be posted publicly, but until then, I hope you have a wonderful month. I will stop recording. <laughs>